welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is jasonnewland.com and this is let me bore you to sleep dot com it's not really it's just let me bore you to sleep you can imagine searching there might actually be a website called let me bore you to sleep dot com which would be quite a good domain name for me to have I suppose considering that's all I do boring paypal so please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes as this boring recording may cause boredom to arise within thy brain causing thy eyes to wish to close and therefore thy eyes may succumb to the boredom and close and if such event were to occur certain activities such as riding a bicycle driving a train swimming with sharks and a variety of other situational activities which involve your attention may not be suitable so please only 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 listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and if you're watching on youtube thank you thank you so much thank you sounds sarcastic to me thank you for watching i do i do i do appreciate honestly i do i appreciate you watching and please subscribe and leave a lovely fluffy comment and whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on uh, you know whatever podcast uh, this is broadcasting on feel free to leave a comment telling me how wonderful I am if that's what you wanted to do I'm going to use my hypnotic powers you will leave a lovely comment saying some nice things and then when I sound a bit like Churchill and we will fight them on the beaches and we will fight them in the air so yeah, it's uh, it's really a good opportunity because you're online and we can communicate in those ways, you know, you're leaving messages and saying how. Because I do get quite a few private comments, like messages telling me how I've helped. Um, a few more public ones would be nice. I can understand why it's private because sometimes the the messages are filled with a lot of very personal content concerning the person that's uh, sending me the message about their own personal lives and possible illnesses or whatever it is that listening to me has provided them with you know a degree of relief and helped support them through that period of their life um, so it's sometimes it's things that they would not want anyone else to really to hear about or to read 
So here's a few examples of those. Dear Jason, I've uh, had a lot of problems with piles. Uh, a lot of problems with piles ever since the uh, accident with the cucumber and uh, it's just it's they're terrible but s since since I've been playing your your um, relaxation audios to my bum uh, everything seems to have relaxed and the piles seem to have just kind of calmed themselves down so and that was from Sebastian in Germany so it's uh, actually I suppose I shouldn't have read that out but anyway it's you know you get the idea if you do have any comments uh, please leave them uh, on the wherever really not on a wall that would be no good I was going to say the Berlin Wall. Is there still a Berlin Wall? But yeah, just uh, somewhere where I'm going to see it. If you write it under a table of a, a restaurant in Australia somewhere, I'm not going to get to see it. You know, one day when they're doing a refurb of the restaurant, I'm saying it. Who's this bloke? Who's this bloke called Jason? Hypnosis. What? Piles? It's like, what on earth? You helped me overcome my fear of UFOs. So it can be a, a, de a degree of different things. So yeah, I'm always, always happy to hear if I am being useful in some way because that's why I'm doing these recordings. It's not just because I'm incredibly bored with my own life and it's uh, my way of filling in an hour. It's because uh, it's not. Although it does feel it an hour in of the day, plus another two or three hours with the editing and, uh, well, the thing is I make out, it takes a long time. But the fact is when I'm making a video, I edit the video, I, I put it together, it's all done in a couple of minutes and then I render it and it might take a couple of hours to render and then it becomes a big file of like five gigabytes or something and then I upload it to YouTube so there's not really a great deal of work involved for me to participate in however I like to kind of exaggerate a bit on my input in the process because I sound I sound amazing I think I, I sound so wonderful so the point of these recordings if you have never ever listened to any of these let me bore you to sleep audio from podcasts or videos the point of it is that I talk at you for you know roughly an hour and that's it You know, it's, um, I've probably done about 30, maybe 25, possibly 21 different introductions, possibly more, maybe less, on what this 
let me bore you to sleep is you know what the synopsis is what the idea is behind such a thing <laughs> you know but I don't know it's because it's turned from being me just uh, expressing and telling stories expressing I don't mean like lactating but it's be to it it's gone from me just being really, really boring and sending you to sleep through extreme boredom to also, as well as doing that, also having some people listening to these recordings daily as a, a kind of you know, for relaxation or to come to calm your mind. Uh, maybe as a distraction. Or maybe as some kind of hmm, I don't know, sort of like a company you know, not physically, obviously, but it's emotionally or a virtually company. So it's kind of that kind of thing where it's just, it's like a continuation of the day before. Very much like life, really. And well, it's very much like life. That's what life is, isn't it? A continuation from yesterday to today till to tomorrow. And there on and so forth and so on. And blah, 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 blah. Lately, I've been closing the kitchen door because the boiler has been making a bit of a racket, a bit of a noise. It's uh, I don't know, it's sort of the sound. The only sound I can really say that it sounds like. It sounds a bit like what I imagine Walt Disney would sound like if he suddenly woke up from his big freeze. They're like, what am I doing in this box? What am I doing? In this? It's like rattling it. So like, let me out. I need to draw something. I've got an idea. Where's Minnie Mouse? Where is she? The love, the love of my life. And oh, I need a cigarette. So yeah, I'd, it's um, it's like very rattly, very rattly, very, very kind of. Ugh. So I've been closing the um, bar. Did I say I meant kitchen door? Did I say bathroom door, or did I say bedroom door? I didn't say front door. I definitely didn't say back door because I don't have a back. Well, you know, I mean a a, a back door as. As far as a door, you know, that goes into a garden. Although there is a door and there is a garden. So that there is a door that goes into a garden, but it's not. It, it doesn't leave from my particular flat. But there is a communal space. Uh, like some grass and stuff. And there's a door that leads to it. So there is a back door, but it's not my back door. So, 
technically, I suppose I've got two front doors. So I've got my own front door. Then there's a front door to the building, which is a front door. But it's not mine. I'm not responsible for it. I don't class it as being my front door. I suppose I would class it as being communal. I share it with the other 500 people or whatever they use it. So it's it's like a share. It's a sharing situation. Yeah. So I don't I don't claim ownership. Not not even in my my mind. But I do have a front door. I remember the first time I saw it. Because when I came to move here, or before I moved here, because it's nearly four years. It's nearly four years. And i tell you when it was. It was, I do believe... It was the Easter weekend. And it was the Tuesday. I'm pretty sure. So there was the bank holiday Monday. And I came to visit this flat on the Tuesday. To view it. And I was asked whether I wanted to take it there and then. Which I wasn't expecting. Because I ideally wanted someone to come with me. To have a look. So I've never had my own flat. Not like this before. And just wanted to get a, you know, a second opinion. But so I felt a little bit pressured to say yes or no, and I said, I don't know, I don't know. Um, do I really have to tell you now? And she said to me, She looked at me, that's how I knew she was talking to me. Didn't say my name, but she looked at me. Even though there was no one else in the building, it was just me and her. But, you know, I knew. I knew she meant business. She said, You can go away if you choose. We'll uncuff you. We'll get the. We'll let you go. However, if you do want to this flat you'll need to let us know by the early afternoon and I was there at something like 8 30 in the morning or something and I said okay and she said and I said okay what happens now then she said well if you don't take it now I'm going to show a bunch of other people your the flat and then if you turn it down this afternoon, then the, they'll get an opportunity to have it. And there was someone waiting outside. And I said, uh, I'll just have it. I'll take it. And she jumped up and down. We did a little dance together. It was very impromptu. But it worked because the good thing about it, as she was swinging me around, and I was thinking, oh, I'm going to start hitting stuff, you know, because my legs were off the floor and I was, she was just swinging me like a rag doll. And then I realised there's no furniture. It's a completely empty building. It's, there's the rooms are empty and 
I think that's kind of it makes everything look bigger, but well, not everything. But because I did go into the bathroom, there was a mirror in there, and yeah, it's nothing. Still the same. Still look the same. But it's things like being swung around in a dance, dancey situation. It was nice because it just from you know had the human touch human touch so it was it wasn't a cold uh, experience of you know do you want this flat yes I do well there you go there's the contract please sign it there's your keys red 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 please don't flood it please don't flood it so it was Please try and get on with your neighbours. They may be your neighbours for some time. So I moved in. I had to get the keys. It was in that order. So I had to get the keys. I don't know when I got the keys. It might have been the following Monday. Or it might have been a couple of days away. I'm not sure. But uh, I had to go and get the keys. And I was told that, yeah, that's it. So I went and got the keys. And then cause I had to get the bus to the place. Because it wasn't anywhere near where I lived. So I went and got this bus. Uh, Luckily, the bus going back to town was just outside the building that I was at. So that was good. I think there was an an off-license or a newsagent was near there as well. I might have gone and bought myself a bar of chocolate. But I can't be certain because I didn't write it down in my journal. So I collected the keys, I went in there, and I don't know if it's still the same building, a council uh, tenancy building or whatever, but I went in there, they said hello, I said hello, they said, can I help you? I said, yeah, she said, what? She said, I said, I can't understand what you're saying. And I said, oh, sorry, I thought I was dreaming. Um, yeah, I was on the bus, I fell asleep. I thought I was still asleep. I said, yeah, i am just come to collect my keys. And she said, ah, oh, is your name Paul? I said, no. She said, ah. Oh, Mr. Newland? I said, no. She said, ah. Well, what is it then? I've only got two sets of keys. I said, it's Mr. Newland. She said, ah. Are you sure you don't mean Newland? I said, no. Newland. I've got 800 recordings where I say new land at the beginning of them I don't need a complete stranger telling me how to pronounce my own name ah but how does your parents pronounce it how does your dad pronounce your surname he pronounced it Newland ah How does your brothers pronounce your surname? Well, I'll answer that with a question. How do you know I've got brothers? Well, it's because it's it's you that's telling the story. You have all the information. 
at the start you had all the information so you know I know you've got brothers because it's me that's you that's telling the story ah and that's me that's going ah not you ah what about your grandmother what did she call us did she did she call you she called me Jason no but what about the surname I can honestly say throughout my whole life not once did she ever call me by my surname not once was I ever in the garden she shouted out Mr Newland would you come in here please your dinner's ready mm. oh I see So how did your nan pronounce her own name? Eileen. <laughs> what was that? Oh, it was a fake laugh. Oh, that's a bit unkind. Do you not know that doing fake laughs is it's very rude? Well, I, I don't know. I didn't really give it that much thought. I just, I just thought it'd be nice. I thought me might like might might like me more if I did a fake laugh. Well, it didn't work, did it? I guess it. I guess, I guess not. Oh, why are you doing that voice? I just thought it would be nice. You didn't like the fake laugh. I thought maybe you'd like a fake voice. No, I don't. Oh, can I keep doing it anyway? Why would you want to keep doing it anyway? I don't know. Just, you know, sometimes you, you just, something feels right. Well, this is it. I don't know what the right term for it is. It just, I just, it feels like I've finally found my niche in life. Your niche in life. How? In what way? Well, by by talking like this, and even though I realise it's getting more different the more I talk, it, it just feels like a really comfortable for me. Okay. Uh, why? Why are you telling me this? Well, because it's only us two that really exist in the world, in this little world that we've uh, created, isn't it? I suppose so. I really don't know. I think I used to know. Well, what is it that you used to know? Well, there used to be a purpose to making these recordings. It seemed like there was a reason for it. And although I didn't rehearse, I didn't, never really, you know, wrote a script, never really knew what I was going to say at the beginning or at the middle at the end I kind of I don't know it kind of stayed in character for the duration what, what do you mean by character? <laughs> what was that? Well, I decided to keep the fake laugh because I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> That's just really strange. I know. <laughs> so. 
so I've been keeping the fridge the the, the bedroom no the bathroom door closed a little bit because of the the sound of the boiler so to keep it nice and you know just to muff it a bit muffle it muffle muffle the muff muffle uh, silent kind of silence it a bit oh yeah okay and and uh, so now I keep it not closed fully but what I noticed is it yeah mm -hmm, yeah is I went into um, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, go on. Mm. I went, I went into the uh, kitchen, and it was really warm. Mm, yeah, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. What, what are you doing? I'm active listening. What? I'm actively listening. I'm letting you know that I'm listening. Yeah. Well, I can't let you know by nodding my head continuously in some kind of frantic way because you know, no one can see that because it's a podcast. It's a podcast. So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm doing it verbally by going mm, yeah mm, yeah mm, yeah yeah mm, yeah and just making the noises continuously. And you call that active listening? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm. And where did you learn that? Oh, yeah, communication course. So you actually, let me get this right, you paid, you paid money to learn how to annoyingly interrupt someone continuously while they are talking. Mm, yeah, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, yeah, mm, mm, mm. So how, how did you actually learn to do it? Well, it's quite easy really. You just practice for like 10, 15 seconds to start with and then you just increase it. So it's like, mm, yeah, mm. It, you know, go slow to start with. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 And you practice, and you want to find one, like someone that sounds that, that sounds nice, that fits with what you want to do. It, you know, it's got to fit with you. It's like you know, you need the right type of underpants. Uh, if you're gonna ride a bicycle, you, you know that kind of situation. It's a, uh, you know. See so what you're saying is your communication style, interrupting people, which you call active listening, is the same as underpants that are worn whilst cycling. Mm, yeah, mm, mm, yeah, mm, 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 yeah, mm, mm. <sighs> So, okay. So you practice for, what, a few seconds, 10, 20 seconds? Yeah, and then just increase it. I can do it for like 20 minutes now. I do vary it though. I don't just go, mm, yeah. Sometimes I, I do a long, oh my God, mm. Ah. Mm. 
you know, do, do the odd noise. Do, I try to uh, be very experimental with the sounds because we learn some of the different techniques to let the person that's talking know that what they've said is resonating with me and that I'm really appreciating the new learnings that uh, I have gained from the experience and the knowledge base of the person that is communicating verbally with me. So I like to let them know. And there's a few different cues to do that. A few different, you know, sounds. Right, so there's sounds, there's specific sounds. Uh, what, 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 like? Well, let's say somebody's talking, if, I, if someone's talking and I'm going, mm, yeah, mm, and I'm not sure if they're noticing that I'm uh, actively listening. They, you know, might not notice. So what I do is, I do something a little bit different, so they can, that they can know that I'm still listening, just in case they think that I've wandered off. You know, internally, I mean. Okay, you can give me an example. Okay, so let's say you were talking about yourself, and you might think that I'm getting bored because for whatever reason and so I'm going mm, um, mm, mm. and then what I do is I go mm, mm, mm. That, that, that last bit I made up I don't ever do that I just thought it'd be funny <laughs> but um yeah, it's a case of just doing different things. Uh, it's experiments, you know? Okay. But you know not all experiments really work. What do you mean? Well, this is an example of that. Some things that weren't even a good idea to start with continue. What do you mean? I'm bored with this now. Yeah, me too. So I closed the door. I don't close the, the, the kitchen door completely. But the other day I walked in and it was warm in there. And I think it was the very, very first time ever, 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 since I have lived here that I've noticed the kitchen being warm. And you may say, but JJ, what about when the cooker is on? Isn't it warm then? So it's, yeah, it is. It does get warm. But it's a different heat. That's a cooking heat. That's a cooking heat. It's a different type of heat. Uh, and there's, there's the smell of food. But I think to walk in and to a kitchen and it, for it to be hot, no smell of anything really is I don't know just seems a bit strange sometimes can't open a bedroom no the bathroom window won't open 
So I have to use the extractor fan every time I have a bath. So I have to turn that on every, once a month. Because I only have a bath once a month. <laughs> yeah. So I, I turn it on. With the extractor fan, I turn it on. So I have the bath. I wash everything that needs to be washed. I spend a bit of time. You know, I've got favourite parts. And... Uh, have some quality time there. So I get, then I, I dry myself off. And I put, usually I put my left foot down onto the green or blue. I think it's blue or green towel. I get a little bit muddled up with those colours. Um blue and green my time as an electrician was very very interesting so but it's either blue or green and I had set and I, I put my left foot down first and I lean on the sink and then I put my right foot down and the reason I do it this way is because I fell out of the bath uh, not long after first moving here and uh, I broke my wrist so I just I like to be careful so I get up so I'm standing there I turn the fan on and and then when I've finished in the bathroom and I've done what I need to do, I leave the bathroom door open so that the air can get in there and the uh, the moist can be dispersed and dispensed uh, throughout the world. Because I don't want moist. And I'm not, I've got nothing against moist things you know generally it's just I don't want I don't want moist walls in my flat you know sort of on the okay how to word this uh, mouldy yeah, I don't I don't want mouldy walls in my flat and I've had mould in the past and didn't particularly enjoy the mould and I don't want that to occur here. I'd pretty much do any well not anything, but I'd you know, I will uh I mean, like I said, I'd do anything. I can't assemble a tank from scratch. I don't know how to. So if you said, well, assemble that tank. He said, you do anything. Go on, do that. I can't. I, can't. I don't know how to. Even with instructions. I'm not even sure how to change a plug. But then... I'm not sure why I would want to change a plug. What what what's in it for me? I think it's it seems safer for society to get somebody else to do stuff that is technically difficult. Um, you know like electrical stuff or plumbing it seems that yeah the better idea would be to get a professional plumber in 
or a professional electrician in to do the electrical side of things. I'd like a punch bag. But I don't know how to... I need a punch bag, but I need it hanging from the ceiling. Because if it was standing up from the floor, it would be... It could be noisy. It could be, you know, quite disruptive to the neighbour downstairs, which I really, I'm not, um, not going to do. I'm not going to do that. Because I've got a really, really good neighbour. So if I had it from hanging from the ceiling, from one of the, what do they call them, those wooden bits in the attic? Uh, not floorboards, not skirting boards, not wooden boards, not parts of a boat, a boat wreck. Is it, is it beams, beams that go across and support? Yeah, because doesn't a house have the triangle beams at the top it does doesn't it and it's quite an old building it goes back not that old but probably just after the second world war so possibly in the 50s or late 40s something like that when this building was put up and imagine how many people have lived here over that time I know there was a man living here before and I know there was a lady that had two shep they shep dogs you know big big old dogs that used to live here with her and all the doors have scratch marks on them where the dogs have been scratching to get in or get out of the doors so I'd like to change the doors one day I do think what shall I do with the with the flat with my home once I have a, any some kind of an income you know what I could do I put in I'd like to put in a nice new carpet but the most soundproof carpet that exists so that I can't hear the neighbours the neighbours can't hear me and then I'll soundproof all the walls I thought also what I would do is put in do you know in Spain I don't know if it's just in Spain or even if it's just a cliche but I think it is in <sighs> parts of Spain they have the wooden window not wooden <laughs> wooden windows the, they have the the wooden things that they put over the windows to close to lock the light out of the maybe that's because of the siestas uh, is it fiesta or siesta I know fiesta was the magazine and the car or so was siesta fiesta and siesta both cars weren't they but fiesta was the uh, it was a magazine for int intellectuals I'm not sure if it's still around. And I'm just trying to think. Yeah. Uh. 
There's a reason for why I was saying that. I don't remember what it was. Driving around. I don't know. Something about a car. No, I don't recall. Couldn't have been important. It really is. Mm. So I like the soundproof all the walls, and yeah, so get those. Uh, like the Spanish window things to block out the light and the sound. So, uh, partly so that when I go to sleep in the summer, if I, although to be fair, I like to have the sun on me in the summer. I like to sunbathe in my bed. I know it sounds like a really strange thing, but during the summer, some not all the time. Sometimes I like to open the windows, open the curtains wide, let the sun shine in, and just lay on my bed and let the sun shine on me. I feel nice and calm. Maybe have a t-shirt on and some shorts. Maybe wear nothing. Maybe just let the sun and the air Yeah, just have let the let the stink circulate around the flat. So it's it's nice. So it'd be nice to have those a, a way to cut out all sound. in the whole flat and then I'll be able to make more recordings that were of a perfect sound well as perfect as possible without any background sounds no birds no traffic no Andre although he's been very good tonight because I took him for a long walk which is what he wanted he's wanted that all day and I took him out and when he got back, he was happy. Went to his bag and has gone to sleep. He got exactly what he wanted to get. He went for a walk, got himself to to sniff everything and to rub around and everything. And he's uh, he's happy. Doesn't take much. As they say, if you can't keep a ferret happy, how are you supposed to win the Olympics? So on that note, I'm going to go. I'm going to fly away into the ocean of dental decay. So I'm just going to say goodbye. Have a lovely, lovely evening and day and morning and just remember listening to me is free. You can listen on my website, Jason Newland. Dot com. And also, I'm on lots of different podcasts. That's it. Right, I'm going to 
Okay.